So hi everyone, welcome to The Confidence Diary, hope you're all fine. So for this video we did an interview with Carl. Carl is uh, called Cash as artist, he's a painter and I have to say I really really enjoy this interview because it just reminds me why I'm doing this to find motivation, inspiration to other people's experiences and it was really the case um, and so hope you guys enjoy as I did. Hello, it's Cash. It's my artist name. I'm a Swedish Zimbabwean based in Brussels. Um, my artist name is basically my initials. So my full name is Carl Anders Sven Hulten. Um, I'm doing my activity in arts for six years now. So it has more or less, uh, I do several things in visual arts. So painting, drawing, uh, designing visuals for companies or individuals. And uh, apart from that, I try to not limit myself, so perhaps in the near future you'll see installations or some other sort of work, but always in the same uh, theme, probably with people, portraits or individuals um, with different setups. Uh, I studied architecture for three years here in Brussels, uh, two years in uh, Saint-Luc, and then one year in La Cambre. Uh, so I always drew since I remember, so maybe since I was like three or four years old. And I really picked it up uh, once I was like 20, 22. So um, I was actually surprised that I could paint because the first time I really did it for myself, it was for my relatives. But um, it's only because they told me how nice it was that I wanted to continue doing it and now um, I'm actually very glad to have this interview because I want to show people that anybody can become an artist whatever the age uh, the most important thing is your journey like uh, how long you're gonna take and what are the efforts that you're putting in to make uh, your art greater and bigger and maybe be an example for younger people that would like to do the same thing, but are fear, they have fear of the way people look at them or judge them. I started because I think everybody draws as a kid. So as far as I can remember, I've been drawing and I have older brothers, so maybe they taught me a few things when I was a kid, but I remember specifically that by the age of six, I did my first auto portrait. So I was looking at myself in the mirror and drawing, and then maybe the same year, I started drawing better than most people in my family. I mean, my direct family, so like my dad, my mom, my brothers. Um, so by the, time, by the time I was 10, for instance, in primary school, some of my friends in class, they would order me drawings of uh, Dragon Ball or cartoons that we would see as uh, youngsters here in, in Brussels. And uh, just, I didn't really realize it was a thing to do because everybody says it's so hard to make a living out of art. So I never thought of it until by coincidence, uh, I was starting to get popular because of my image as a model or other things in my life. And then I realized it might be the good time, the right time to dare to do a career, dare to show what I do, dare to be exposed and uh, have critics, you know, to, to just go further. That's more or less uh, the story. I got invited this year on uh, the show uh, C'est Mon Choix. And how I got there is a funny thing is I did the graphics of a friend of mine who gives tips and tools to how to take care of uh, your hair. And so they reached out to her asking, do you know somebody that is atypical or a bit different from average? And so she called me and she's like, uh, I think you have the perfect profile to go on the show. So they called me and I thought about it a little bit and then I decided to do it. And while I was there, um, I got lucky enough to explain that I was an artist on French TV. And then the funny story about that is the show is like maybe an hour. 
but they took a short sequence of that show that was transmitted in a bigger show uh, that's called uh, Touche Pas à Mon Poste. And so I, I got a lot of, um, of echoes of that. And basically it was at the same period that I was doing my first uh, solo exhibition in Paris in the um, Saint-Germain-des-Prés. So, you know, I, I, I got lucky. Hard work and a little bit of luck. <laughs> my mom uh, lives in Denmark, in Copenhagen, and uh, she's Zimbabwean, but she had to learn Danish. And basically, it took her a long time to learn Danish and then to finish her studies. And once she finished, she, she established this uh, NGO, basically, that helps women of African diaspora to integrate Europe by obviously starting in Denmark. But um, when she did it, it's because she couldn't find the help necessary f to, to go faster, basically, to find the funds or, you know, to, to whatever sort of helps. And uh, I've been working as her, how do you call it, visual coordinator uh, since 2011. So um, every year it's picking up a, a bit more. I would say this year it was fantastic. We have a lot of sponsors and it's um, given us a lot of exposure. Me working in this NGO also changed my perception as an artist because you get to meet a lot of people concerned about uh, human rights and moral issues a little bit everywhere in the world. And when you're in front of an activist, a feminist or whatever they are, you need to take a step back and think of uh, how great and what is the message of your own art, you know? I used to only pay attention to aesthetics or to my own person, but not in the, on the worldwide scale. Yeah, that's more or less it. Two people that really changed my vision. The first would be uh, quite a while ago, maybe five years ago, I met uh, the Reverend Jesse Jackson. And I was very concerned because he did a lot of things in his era. And when I got to meet him, I was very surprised because he allowed me to discuss with him over for more than an hour. So I was, uh, I felt blessed and basically uh, I wanted to do great things, greater than the people I meet. So that was one thing. And then last year, I met an artist that's uh, Congolese, uh, originally from Congo, but I'm, he's Belgium. And the crazy thing is he worked with one of my idols that's, that passed away. Um, he worked with a guy that's called Jean-Michel Basquiat who was like uh, one of the protégés of Andy Warhol. He's also the first Afro-American to have been in the Museum of Contemporary Art. So it's like a big thing. And uh, this guy, he invented a painting technique when he was 17 by mistake. And uh, then he, he got named after Jean-Michel Basquiat that called him the biggest monkey of Africa. So in French, his name is Berce Grand Singe. And uh, what I really liked is when I went to an, an exhibition, it was in Matongue, in, in a place I wouldn't call it fancy. It even closed down now, just to let you know. And I saw somebody buying, you know, uh, some of his paintings for a few thousand euros, and I was pretty impressed. And then there was a queue of people to talk with him. And when I talked with him, I asked him, oh, how did, what, what, what's your technique? And he explained to me every step, you know, he was like, I'm going to explain it to you so well that you can do it at home. You know, so he wasn't scared of people stealing his idea. He was very transparent about it. So immediately I asked him, oh, can I go and visit uh, your workshop, your atelier? And he said, yeah, of course. What, what time? What day? And I was like, well, did you have a business card? He didn't have one. So he, he wrote his phone number. He gave it to me on a piece of paper. Next week I called him. He showed me exactly in front of me, and I, I really appreciated that because it's, it was uh, so direct, you know? Yeah. And in, there's so much competition in this, in this world, and in the art world, 
specifically i think people wouldn't want to show how they do things so he showed me that it was doable to be sharing and to be successful i hope you all had a good time watching this video and got a little inspired and see you next time and don't forget be the best of yourself